Well, I guess good afternoon um, and hello. Welcome to the Indiana Farmers Market Community of Practice April webinar. Are you using market metrics to determine the potential of your farmers market? I am Christina Faroli, the Grants Program Coordinator for the Indiana Cooperative Development Center. With us today, we have Dominique Edwards, Susan Kempfer, and Jenny F. Effinger. I will introduce all three speakers before we begin the presentation. Dominique Edwards is the engagement specialist for the City of South Bend on the Engagement and Economic Empowerment Team. She has a de decade of experience in the field of food systems, planning, and sustainability, where she has worked across Northwest Indiana to analyze and local and regional food systems. Dominique joined the City of South Bend in 2020, where she began leading the city's food security work alongside her colleagues to address food insecurity on the city's west side. Dominique is also a founding member and current board member of the Northwest Indiana Food Council, North Region Representative of the American Planning Association's Indiana Chapter, and Education Coordinator of the Walker Street Park Community Garden Project. Dominique is also working toward her PhD in community psychology, where her research will focus on lifting the visibility of Hoosier Black farmers. We also have Susan Kempfer with us today. Susan volunteered and managed the New Albany Farmers Market from 20, 2003 to 2020, supporting the market as it grew from three vendors to 86 vendors. As the market grew in size and popularity, the city of New Albany kicked off a project to expand the pavilion, more than doubling the size and allowed expansion onto the surrounding streets. Susan grew up in a farming community in Wisconsin with cow friends next door. After her dad had a battle with skin cancer and had to give up farming, their family lived in a small town next to the local farms. Her interest is high in all things farmer and especially in what it means to be a farmer. Later in life as a director of IT in Southern California, Susan visited farmers markets each weekend, whether at home in California or traveling for work in a foreign country. Within six months of moving to Indiana and seeing the amazing farmland, Susan felt that it was important to volunteer to help the local farmer's market grow. Susan lives in New Albany, attends farmer's markets each week, and is a faculty member for Animal Jinshin Jitsu. I hope I said that right. She provides human Jinshin Jitsu education and consults with farmer's markets about how to create an impact in their community. And our third speaker is Ginny Effinger. She has yet to join us, but I hope she'll pop on before the end of today's webinar. And Jenny, just a quick bio on Jenny, um, is currently the market manager for the Mini Trista um, Market in Muncie. Previously, Jenny founded the Frankton Town Market in Frankton, Indiana, and she operated that farmer's market for three years. She is also on the board of the Franklin, Frankton Heritage Days Festival and Frankton Heritage Days plans and hosts an annual festival in Frankton each year, along with many other events and fundraisers throughout the year. So she's heavy involved with the Frankton um, Heritage Days projects. Before getting involved with farmers markets, um, Jenny worked in hospitality industry for 15 years in planning events and working in countless events of all types. I want to remind everyone to please remain muted during the presentation. However, we want this to be participatory. So if you have questions, raise your hand and um, we will call on you or you're always welcome to drop your questions in the chat and we will have time at the end for a Q&A. Toward the end of this presentation, I will drop an evaluation survey link for the webinar. If you'd be so kind as to complete it before you um, end or hop off the Zoom meeting, then we will be able to collect some survey data on how well we did with this webinar. So um, welcome to Dominique, Jenny, and Susan, and thank you all for participating. And Dominique will be up first in our presentation order. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, excellent. Again, my name is Dominique Edwards, and I am the engagement specialist on the engagement economic empowerment team for the city of South Bend. Oh, give me one second. So here in St. Joan County, our residents experience a food insecurity rate of roughly 13%. 
So what that means is that 13% of our population does not have access to fresh nutritional based food. And that that 13% is roughly around 35,000 residents that have challenges accessing fresh food. On a state level, although Indiana is the 10th largest farm state in the US, 90% of the food that Hoosiers consume is sourced outside of the state and 98% of fruits and vegetables are imported into the state. With the Linden Avenue pop-up market, this is a food security pilot program that was designed to address food insecurity on the west side of South Bend, particularly the Kennedy Park neighborhood. And so this program was designed as a result of the 2018 West Side qualitative study that identified that residents needed access to grocery stores and community spaces. So in 2021, we piloted three markets from August to October, where we collected and analyzed data to learn more about the needs of the residents around food ac fresh food access. So the pop-up markets work to address three goals, which include long-term market viability, especially for local vendors and residents, working to engage with residents to learn more about their needs and if the pop-up markets address their priorities around fresh and culturally appropriate food access and to activate a space that has seen historic uh, disinvestment and systematic exclusion. To implement and test these metrics, we partnered with over 20 local growers and food entrepreneurs to offer affordable, quality and nutritious products to local residents. We combined fresh food outreach with performances and entertainment with local artists and information outreach to drive engagement and participation. During these events, we spoke with Kennedy Park residents to learn more about the impact and effectiveness of regenerating the local food system and work to encourage a stronger social network within the city that helps to keep the Kennedy Park neighborhood healthy. Oops, excuse me. So why is this important? You know, how does it fall into tracking metrics and what should you be looking for? So there are a few things to look into when we talk about regenerating local food systems, especially on a community level, which includes addressing local food accessibility, uh, decreasing food miles, which falls into decreasing emissions and getting food closer to the communities we serve as food travels nearly 2000 miles to actually reach our plates, uh, local food procurement directly from local growers, local and regional food systems regeneration and revitalization and increasing participation in local markets on the community level, especially vulnerable and underserved populations. So this work is incredibly important to local food systems through the creation of food hubs, where communities have the ability to build community wealth that anchors their local food system around cooperatives or other wealth building enterprises. When we create food hubs, this allows for wider market access for small to mid-sized producers to increase access to fresh, healthy food for consumers, which again supports underserved areas and communities that live under food apartheid. So what did we learn and what did we capture? We had nearly 500 market part, uh, patrons that participated across our markets in 2021. 94% of patrons reported that they were more likely to attend mar uh, another market. 64% stated that they would likely consume fresh food due to a market. And 61% lived less than three miles away from the market. So we collected data on site during the markets by collecting surveys from patrons. We also distributed surveys to vendors before and after the market. And we analyzed the data we collected to develop our pilot report with a set of recommendations for market viability. So here are some of the things we learned from our vendors. Because it is incredibly important to know and understand the challenges that they experience because this can and will make or break a market. This is how your vendors participate in what they experience. So some of our vendors reported that the average cost of participating in a market was roughly $190 and that they roughly sold around $200 of products per market and but 100% of vendors would participate again which the majority of our vendors have returned for season two of our pilot, which kicks off in June this year. And we are heavily underway um, of our planning efforts for an amazing second season. So what were some of the pain points our vendors experienced and what, were, and, and what are we exploring to decrease those challenges? The permitting process through our county health department 
we, uh, we want food safety to always be a priority. And we found that administration rather than compliance created a lot of barriers for vendors for market access and participation. To alleviate a lot of those pain points and reduce barriers and obstacles to fresh food access, we provided a $500 stipend to our local farmers and food vendors, which incentivized vendors to, to decrease their cost of their products, which also decreased barriers to healthy food access for our consumers as well. Alongside working with our peers at Purdue Extension to obtain SNAP and EBT certification for qualified vendors to also further decrease barriers to access for consumers. Our team developed a set of recommendations around this program to determine market viability and success, which also includes continuing to build momentum by holding markets for the next three to five years, engagement and relationship building with vendors beyond markets, continuing working with our peers at the county health department to streamline the permit process and build stronger communications, facilitate coordination between internal and external stakeholders, and continue to provide incentives to vendors to participate in markets, reduce costs, and increase food, fresh food access, and lastly, to increase vendor diversity to provide a wider variety of fresh food products. To learn more, please feel, feel free to connect with us beyond this presentation and continue to learn how the city of South Bend is working toward food security on a local and regional level. So thank you for the opportunity to speak with all of you today. And here's my contact information. Thank you, Dominique. Um, I have several questions. Um, one is how did you survey the residents? Did you use like paper and pencil survey old school or did you speak to them and record their responses? So we developed some surveys um, ahead of the market and we were actually in fields um, with tablets. And so we had um, a couple of tablets where we uh, surveyed the, uh, the patrons after they um, kind of patronized the market, uh, went to a couple of vendors and we kind of caught them or tried to catch them on their way out. So to better learn um, you know, what their experience was, what drew them in, how far away they lived from the market, things like that. So do you feel that they were very open to that type of survey? They were, they were. So what we made sure to do was um, not to overwhelm them and uh, make sure that, you know, you kind of keep those types of things short and sweet. Um, and so because, you know, folks are sometimes, you know, they're in and out and they're kind of the hustle and bustle of a market and things like that. So. And then did, what were your strategies in surveying the vendors? So our strategies in surveying the vendors was to better understand what their needs and what their challenges were. So um, one of the things to also reduce uh, a barrier to market access was um, there was no uh, there was no vendor fee for participating. Um, they provide we provided them with a subsidy, and um, and so we basically asked pre we asked some pre and post information around. Um, you know, what they were planning to bring to market, as well as what did they sell, how much of it did they sell, and things like that. Awesome. There was a question, how sustainable is the $500 vendor stipend, and will you continue that in the future? Yes, so we will continue this, um, the stipend in the future, and so um, last year, we've also found that vendors said that they would participate without a stipend. So the stipend is optional, but it is, is optional now this season, but also um, still available for vendors upon um, if they request it or if they are in need of it, so. All right, we have a few more, but I'm gonna wait and ask those later in case our other two speakers touch upon those topics. Okay. So um, our next speaker in the lineup is Jenny Effinger and she has, um, she's on, and I've already introduced everyone. So Jenny, if you wanna hop on and, and share with us. Um, so I don't have like a formal presentation. I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that we do. So I'm the farmer's market manager at Minatrista currently. Um, they do all kinds of um, capturing for information they have in the past and then we plan to do more in the future. One of the things that we're doing this year um, along with Yorktown is we're using farm spread for our vendor applications and actually all of our events at Minatrista. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can capture on farm spreads. So 
Since Minatrista is an entire organization that deals with more than just the farmer's market, it's hard for me personally sometimes to see a lot of these metrics that might be pertinent to my position. For example, like um, how much money we bring in from vendor fees and things like that. Those are the things that are most interesting to me. Um, so now that we're using farm spread, I'll be able to see that directly. Map. I have not. Um, I've never heard of map my market, but I have heard of manage my market. And that was one of the other online platforms that we considered um, before we ultimately went with farm spread. So um, lots of different things that you can keep track of on farm spread. Can you like cite some of the the indicators that you're able to collect on farm spread, Jenny? Yeah, sorry. I, I need to ignore the comments because yeah. I read them and then I get sidetracked. <laughs> I'll, cir um, well, I'll circle back around and help you with that. Okay. So um, on farm spread, there are a lot of different things that you can capture. So there's also different tags that you can put on your vendors if you really wanted to. Like if you want to know exactly how many produce vendors you have for any given date, you can add like a little um, like hashtag to those vendors and you can go back and look that up. Um, what I particularly like is that we're all very capable of making um, spreadsheets for a million different, um, a million different, I guess, like catch points of information, but this narrows it all down into one platform. So it is all right there for you to find. I'm trying to pull up, um, I'm pulling it up in the background right now so I can look at it. Um, but also some of the things that we that I've captured since I started was um, I did a vendor survey. I was curious to know like what times for the market the vendors prefer because a lot of our vendors prefer nine to noon, but the ones who filled out that survey said that they prefer eight to noon. So this year we're doing eight to noon, unfortunately, because I have to be there extra early now. Um, but yeah, that was one of the things that was interesting to me. I feel like there are so many different things that you can, um, different types of information that you can really look into. It just sort of depends on what your needs are. So another need that we're gonna be meeting this year, or I guess it's a want, we're gonna try and ask the vendors how much they're making. Um, and I believe it'll probably just be once a month. So maybe when I collect the SNAP, tokens and the IU health bucks, which is something that we also keep track of. Um, then I'll also ask them like, what's an estimated income for you today? And so that way, when we're going after grants and things like that, that's information that our grantors would want to know about how much are you bringing into the community? How are you supporting local business? You know, how are these sales helping your vendors? So that's something that we'll be doing this year, which is different. I don't think they've ever done that at Minitra before. Um, and Jenny, will um, farm thread help you with that process? Or it can. Are you I, paper survey? I think it's just going to be paper because I, I want the vendors to be able to remain anonymous. I have no reason as far as right now for right now, I have no reason to know specifically like how much Schrock is making or whatever. Um, I just need to know overall about how much money are we bringing into the vendor community um, as far as grants purposes goes. So I think I wanna keep that part as anonymous as possible um, for right now. Plus it's something that vendors aren't necessarily used to in this area. So I don't know how well it will be received if it's specific to that vendor. So I think we're just going to keep it anonymous for this year. But yes, in the future, there, there would be a way for vendors to enter that into farm spread, and then it would be tied to their direct account. So it would be much more um, like specific to which vendor makes how much money. Are you going to be tracking um, customer accounts? At all? We do that already. So that is something that Menetrista does. We have a volunteer every Saturday who we call them the clicker. They sit there and click all of our guest counts. And that's something that we've already had entered into our systems. I don't know how long they've been doing it for quite a while. Um, so we know that we average around 1200 people per market day throughout the six months that we have the market. 
Um, I personally collect information on other markets as well. Like I don't have like a formal database with any of that information or anything, but it's interesting to me to find out um, how we stack up compared to other local markets. Are we doing well? Are we, you know, maybe there's room to grow. I always think there's room to grow, but um, in comparison, like how, how are we doing because I don't think it's a direct competition, any of the other local markets, but I do think it's kind of like a benchmark. Like, well, if they can get this many people, then how can we get that many people or, you know. Understandable. So there's a question about um, farm spread and is, is it based on booth vendor cost? So I guess signing up for it or is it like a, a yearly subscription? Oh, okay. So the way that farm spread did it, um, I don't necessarily love the way that they do it. They do it based on how many booths you offer that season. So for us, we have access to two parking lots. I can fill both of those parking lots if I really wanted to. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily love that they do it that way. We just estimated how many booths we think we'll have on average. Um, manage my market did it per vendor. So every vendor that you accept to your market, they charge you, I can't remember what the cost was per vendor for manage my market, but it was, um, that's the two differences between the two of them. What we did like about farm spread is that when vendors pay, it's not paying through PayPal or whatever. There's no separate PayPal account. It goes straight into our checking account. So their credit card payment goes straight into our checking account. So I can see all of the money, but I don't necessarily have access to it, which is, I think helps me because I'm not the CFO. So I yeah. don't necessarily want to be held responsible for all of this money that's sitting in this account. Um, and I also don't want to have to mess with PayPal. So, or Square, I think was the other option. So that, that was one of the features that I particularly liked about farm spread. I have a question about your um, customer accounts. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, do you do it at one entrance point or do you have two entrance points? We have one clicker who sits there. And if you've ever been to Minatrista, we have vendors on one side and then we have a courtyard and then we have vendors on the other side. So they sit on one side and kind of watch that doorway as people come through. So it's never going to be 100% accurate. People are walking all over the place, but at least it's close enough for us to get some sort of um, estimate. Okay. Let me see what other questions. I mean, guys, there's literally so many things like I, this year, I'm also interested in doing like an internal survey within our organization just to see if the perception of what we're doing at market actually meets up with what we are doing at market. And it again, some of these things are just really specific to Minatrista because we are a museum and gardens. So, um, <laughs> sorry, can you hear no, me? No. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay. It's so yeah, you have a whole different, you're a museum, so. Yeah, some of the things is like, I want to know what the rest of the staff really perceives the market to be doing because I'm sure that they have a perception that sometimes doesn't match up with what we are doing. And I wanna know if those perceptions are something that we should be striving towards or if they're just um, like misconceptions, if, if they are misconceptions. I'm and just curious you, though. That makes sense. Cause if you're an organization, you wanna make sure that everyone aligns like your mission, right. vision, purpose of the market aligns with what exactly. your organization. Are you going? Um, are you going to be like reaching out to any of your customers and doing surveys, like for um, yeah satisfaction, or you know just um, why they come yeah. to market? So one of my big things was that I really wanted to add artisans to the market this year. Um, personally, I, I like supporting all small businesses and creativity and entrepreneurship in every way. And so it bums me out that we don't have artisans right now, um, especially with this new branding as like a museum and gardens. So I'm curious to see if the customers actually want to see that sort of thing at market. It may be a little bit easier um, for us to like take that leap and, and accept artisans. So that is something that will be happening. And then I also want to know, like, what kind of programming would you like to see at the market? Because we have a programming department at Minatrista. And right now, um, 
the sky's the limit. Like we could come up with any program we want. Right. But I want to know if it's, if it's something that's actually, um, has a need or a want before we just, you know, start going crazy with it. So are you going to, have you thought about paper surveys or just, um, a one-on-one survey where you just chat with the customers or do you have any strategy in mind for that? So I like to have I like to have things in writing so that I can show the higher ups. I've had conversations before, but then it sort of turns into this, um, like he said, she said sort of thing, not like, not in a negative way, but I can't prove that that's what anyone has said. It's just sort of like, well, I heard, I heard that so-and-so might like this. I think, I think anytime you can get it in writing is much better. Um, and it's easier to keep track of. So I would like to have a survey on the website and then our communications team will be attending market on the first Saturday of every month. And they'll be asking questions and gathering information as well. Um, Because also for, for marketing purposes, you want to know where your market is, like, where's your audience, where are they coming from? What are they interested in? Um, So it saves you money. So you don't have to, you don't have to advertise to Delaware County and the six surrounding counties. You can just, you know, hit those people that are most likely to attend that there's so good. many things. <laughs> well, there's in the world of um, market assessment, there's um, rapid farmers market assessment tool. And mm-hmm. it's a three prong strategy. Um, I don't know if Susan can speak to us about it. There's customer accounts. So it's the head count mm-hmm. and use the dot survey where you can actually get customers to share where they're from and mm-hmm. what they like. Um, and then the third is actual surveys, like you call someone or you do the survey like um, Dominique shared where they use the iPad. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, those are all valid strategies for assessing farmers markets. Let's see if we have any more questions. All right, so why don't we turn it over to Susan now, if you don't mind, Jenny, and then we'll circle yeah. back and um, entertain more questions. Right, well, in... Uh... In my situation, and when I started uh, working with the market, we were really very, very tiny. We had only three vendors and were really um, just trying to get off the ground and trying to get the market to be even be known. A lot of folks didn't even know that the market existed. So we were able to grow very quickly the first year to get over 20 vendors, um, which really helped us. But we didn't even start thinking about metrics until probably our third year when we had enough people coming to the market, enough vendors at the market that would make sense um, for us to to try to figure out how to grow it. Our desire was to get that baseline of information rather than just kind of having a gut feeling about what we thought the market um, was creating in terms of impact on the community. If anybody remembers, if you were in New Albany um, back in the early 2000s, we had lots of Um, closed businesses. There were no, not any real stores. There wasn't even a restaurant downtown except for one small Italian restaurant. Um, So lots of of inactivity. Um, And what we saw is that over time, and not just due to the farmer's market, we actually had a, a big Main Street push to try to get a YMCA opened, which really helped give some foot traffic and some additional visibility to the downtown area and also ended up bringing in some additional boutiques and and, um, shopping opportunities. Um, We really saw, I wanted to understand, you know, was the farmer's market contributing to that during that timeframe? And was it helping us emerge as a small town that, you know, was worthy for consideration? And we're right on the river across from Louisville. So we also had the potential of the West End of Louisville with in essence, a food desert um, to possibly be impacted by what we were doing um, in New Albany and and certainly did have lots of shoppers eventually that found us. So we were able to to do that kind of thing. Um, But mostly what we did, um, uh, I totally relate to what Jenny was talking about with the clicker because we had um, three or four of those, one on each corner of the market. And we would just keep track of the people and hope that we weren't double counting. You know, if somebody could see someone from both ends and also all of our surveys and things were all you know, verbal. We just uh, talked to customers. We got input from the vendors. We were mostly looking um, from the customers about what additional products they might have, what additional activities they would be willing to come to the market um, to do you know, from a programming standpoint. We worked with the library and the hospital and some other nonprofits to try to have activities 
because we were looking for opportunities, you know, if the grandparents wanted to bring their kids to the market, you know, that they would have the opportunity to, to maybe do something fun with them. Um, and I think I spoke at one of our other events about our Zucchini 500 that we started doing, you know, um, later in the season to just have some activities that the kids could participate in, but also understand, you know, what to do as far as the food opportunities that we had. We also tried to have chefs available at the market every other week so that people could learn how to um, cook the food that was available and also understand more about the, the food that was available. So I think that largely covered a lot of what we did, you know, with the surveying and, and any kind of metrics we did. Everything was very manual. Um, I never had a chance to look at the, the rapid farmer's market assessment tools, those kind of things. They, they would be great, but, you know, manpower, as everybody knows, is pretty tough when you're running a volunteer market. So we, we had challenges trying to have enough folks to try to put all of that together. And I think I did see another comment about the health department. Um, the health department was also very um, critical for us. They actually helped our vendors be successful. They, uh, they were um, supportive in terms of trying to help people that were struggling with how to, how to properly present and preserve their foods while at the market. So that was, that was super um, for us to, to really help people understand what and how to do, how to do things at the market. So did you ever get into survey, like paper and pencil surveys, or it no. was just... Yeah, we, we certainly did keep track of information and, and did have, you know, collected that, presented it to back to um, our board and also um, to the city, to the mayor's office, that kind of thing, but nothing that was super scientific. You know, we did, didn't really have the time and, and the ability to go too much further than really understanding what else we could do to make the market successful and what else we could do to satisfy people. And amazingly, we have folks come um, over from, you know, the other side of Louisville just to be a part of our market, which, you know, we thought was interesting. We just didn't expect participants to come from that far away. We certainly expected it from all of the town's local to us on our side of the river in Southern Indiana, but um, we do have a lot of folks that come over from Louisville and, and almost prefer our market um, to other markets because of its size and because of, you know, the kinds of vendors that we were able to attract. So with the vendors, were you able to collect any um, sales data from them? I know Dominique um, touched upon that. Yeah, we did limited, mostly due to privacy. And I think Jenny touched on this too. We just kind of didn't want to get into people's business too much. So we tried to gauge um, ranges that we would ask people to give us numbers for. Um, but we really didn't want to get too much into what we thought might not be our business. I know it's important. And for some of the grants, because we didn't have that data, it made it tougher for us. But, um, but we, we were just weren't real super comfortable trying to, to get into people's finances. So thank you. Um, I did see some Nancy shared data on Manage My Market, which is $15, per bo $15 per booth and farm thread is $10. So the, uh, the online farmer's market managing systems do incur a cost that you have to figure out how to offset either with vendor fees. Um, so that could be, but at the same time, you're probably able to organize um, information on those platforms. I know Jenny shared in the comments that JotForm is um, helpful. I'm not really familiar with JotForm. Um, unless it's similar to Microsoft Forms. Um, and those are blinded forms, so you can collect data really easily. Um, do you wanna uh, share a little bit on JotForms, Jenny? Yeah, so JotForm is just like an online platform. You can go and, and build any form. So I used to use it for the applications at the Franklin Town Market. And what's cool is that um, it'll take your information and put it into like graphs or pie charts or whatever, if you want it to. But then it also has a tool where it, you can just compare question by question, like which vendors chose to be a full season vendor. You can scroll over to that question and see which ones like switched um, full season or half season or quarter, season, whatever you offer. So it is nice um, to be able to compare side by side like that. That is one thing that I wish, and I may be missing a feature, I don't know, but I wish that um, Farm Spread did that a little bit better. I don't see on there like who selected half season vendor without 
manually going into their application and then looking at that question. So that's kind of a missed opportunity and it may be on there somewhere. We're still new to this program, but um, job form, I use a, a lot for surveys because it keeps your information nice and organized. And the first, I don't know how many submissions are free. So you can make a form, use it, collect that data, transfer it into your own system or whatever you want to do, and then just erase it and make a new form over and over and over for free. And it may be free for not-for-profits. I haven't looked into it. That's awesome. I know we, I use Microsoft Forms, so that's helpful. Dominique, yeah. do, do, have you used any management system to collect your data? How did, how did you go about that process? Yeah, so actually what we did was we designed our forms in, um, in Microsoft Forms, as, or our surveys in Microsoft Forms, and that's how we collected the data. It sounds like it works similarly to job forms. All right, did, let me see if I missed any questions. Oh, um, I think you shared you also collected, what are some of the metrics you use, Dominique? Because you collected geographic data, which is very interesting. Yes, so we collected a number of um, different metrics. So including um, household size, um, how much uh, that the vendors were, I'm sorry, that the consumers were purchasing. We also collected, um, you know, how did, how did patrons hear about the markets where, you, and again, their geographic location. So um, how far away were, partic are, were participants traveling um, to the markets? We also collected how they were getting to the markets as well. So wh whether they were taking transit, uh, walking, biking, um, rolling to the, uh, to the market as well. Um, what else did we collect? And so, and then how much um, on average were attendees spending at the markets, um, and then again, um, were they more likely to consume fresh food, and um, would they more than likely patronize in other markets, and um, how many reported if they were likely or very likely to tell a friend about the market, which 97% of our market patrons said that they were likely or very likely to tell a friend about the market. And was this through an online, did you use the Microsoft Forms online, or was this collected at the market, the data, because that's amazing data. Yes, so we collected the, we collected all this information during the, during the events on site um, where uh, through Microsoft Forms. So we utilize tablets collect, to collect uh, information in the field during these events. Fantastic. Um, we, I have a, a, there's a nod to JotForm that it's a really great database and so helpful especially in pulling reports. So um, if anybody wants a, a good database system, check out Jot, Jot Form. Jenny or Susan, do you have anything else you'd like to share with the group? Yeah, I did wanna add, you know, on our farmer's market applications for our vendors, we have just really basic questions on there as well. Um, like, how did you hear about the market? How long have you been coming? Do you attend any other events? Since I started in September, some of these things might be common sense, but it's interesting to me um, to hear about it. They may just assume that I know that they've been there since 1999 or whatever, but I don't know that until they tell me. So some of these things, you know, you have a captive audience while they're sitting down to apply. You might as well ask a couple basic questions um, and they're pretty harmless. And then, like I said, I also sent out a survey after the fact to just review the event and um, ask them more details about upcoming events. Like what time would you like to see? Um, are you okay with, because a lot of vendors don't have produce early in May, but our vendors do because they've planned ahead for this. They've been there for many years. So I asked, you know, are you okay with us continuing all the way through May and all the way through October? And many of them who responded said yes, um, but I wouldn't have known unless I asked. So and again, I, I really do think it's important to have as much on paper as possible, especially in my case, just because then I can relay that to other people. I don't have to, you know, keep track of it in my head. So um, 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Mandy shared with us that they've used band application to survey vendors. Are any of you familiar with band? If not, we can ask her to share. Okay. I'm unfamiliar with it, so I'd like to learn more about it. All righty. Hey, Mandy, are you still, um, are you with us? I am. Um, Band is just a, a commu communication app and um, you can take surveys on it as well. So um, I also like Google Forms for sure. And I'm super interested in the other platform they've been, everyone's been talking about. So thank you for sharing that. But Band's just an easy way to do a quick survey especially like for that market day, we use it for communication. So if there is an issue, it's a nice way to run a quick survey to fill out how everyone felt about a situation that went down or something. Is it phone-based, Mandy? Yes, yeah, you can do it um, on an app on your phone. So it's super, it's convenient. Yeah, or you can put it on, on a tablet yes. and use it that way too. So yeah, so that sounds good. Definitely want to check that one out. If anybody else has used any platform that is super helpful in collecting farmers market metrics and are willing to share, um, please do. Cause that's, there's a lot of different um, farmers market management systems out there. As, and the key is what do they have built in and what metrics do, do they help with, um, help you collect. So that'll be something we will be exploring a little bit more in depth in upcoming webinars, um, other than using Manage My Market, other than using um, spreadsheets and JotForm and Microsoft Forms. Christina, I have a question for my colleagues and other folks on the phone too. Go ahead. Um, I was just curious how many people are actually going out to um, vendors locations like to do farm visits and to actually see and and understand what each of the farmers um, have and where they where they are creating their products and that kind of thing. Dominique, have you been able to do any of that since your market started last year? Um, is that a game plan for you moving forward or? Yes, absolutely. So this season, what I uh, did a little bit differently is I've started to kind of slowly uh, go and do some visits to some of the areas. So in our application in and of itself, we do ask um, a couple of different questions, such as whether or not the, uh, the vendors have insurance, uh, business insurance, serve safe certification, um, and then different any other different maybe um, permits or licensure that is applicable to their farm operations. Um, some of these vendors I've seen at other markets. Um, and so, and then also making sure, and then we work very heavily with Purdue Extension on the health department. So if it doesn't fly with the health department, it doesn't fly with us. So that, and that is kind of a, a I guess you can say a, um, another unit of measure that we, uh, that we work with as well because food safety is definitely a priority. So. Okay, thank you. Jenny had. Oh, I was, she asked how many of us um, do farm visits and I was just saying we do. Yeah, we, there's a hand, quite a few do farm visits. Yeah, I, I think what we found is that really provided a lot of good information for us running the market about how people farmed and the way they farmed and, and just even how they rotated their crops, that kind of thing. Uh, and it, we just found it very invaluable. So I, I just wanted to maybe do a plug for go visit, go visit your farmer. That sounds good. Okay, so verification for, um, so there's managers are using site visits to, um, verify that they are 100% producer because if markets are marketing themselves as being 100% producer farmer markets, then you need to verify that they're actually producing everything that they're selling. And you can compare it to the pictures that you took, you know, at the market on a given week. If you go to that farmer, farmer's location, you know, once or twice a year, you can kind of verify that what's on their table is something that they group. Gotcha. Um, there's a comment from Legita Wilson who who 
who runs the WIC and Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. And she said that's very, very helpful for them if you have um, done your farm visits. So then you can verify that they're actually farming on their land and all the little components that need to be in place to um, be a WIC and Senior Farmers Market, um, Farmers Market. Um, there was a question about if we're going to be able to collect and aggregate data statewide, and that would definitely be a possibility. The Indiana Farmers Market Community of Practice can do that. Um, just wanting to know who's, you know, who out there is collecting data, how they're collecting it, what um, farmers market management platforms people are using, are they helpful in collecting data? Um, there's so many systems out there and how we can work smart and not reinvent the wheel. So yes, and that is something that we, we can definitely look into as we move forward, because data is very important um, for growing a market, you know, expanding your market from the three vendors to the 80, how many did you end up with, Susan? You know, the, the year that we had the most, we had 86, I believe. Um, and only when we did special events for pets and things like that, did we go above it. It seemed like it was maybe more than what our community could manage. Um, it was just a lot of people in a, I don't, I don't know that the, each of the vendors made as much money on those kind of weekends as they did on the weekends when we only had 60 to 70. So it, I think we just, it was just more than we needed. That's, yeah, that could be one of those double-edged swords. It would be a good thing, but at the same time, you know, you need to be able to manage um, your market. So if anybody needs to reach, um, reach out to our uh, presenters, they can drop contact information into the chat. I am gonna go ahead and, hold on, let me drop the, webinar. I had it, but then I think. So if you have any other questions, this is last call, but please go ahead and complete. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Sorry. I thought I got it. Two seconds. If anybody'd like to unmute, here's the forms to do for the evaluation. If everyone can do that really quickly. Thank you for dropping your contact information. Legita, I had a quick question. Um, we don't keep track of what our vendors receive at the market as far as like WIC um, or senior farmers market nutrition program. Is that something that we should do? Would that be helpful? Cause right now I keep track of snap and IU health bucks because we are directly reimbursing the vendors, but the vendors go and cash their own checks for WIC. So I don't necessarily have any information on that, but I know that they do receive them at the market. Um, yes, that is not something that you need to do. Um, and, and, it, and it does cause some confusion with the farmers because WIC requires one-to-one -one reconciliation between the uh, benefit recipient and the vendor. The vendor themselves have to receive the benefits. So no, mm. not something you have to worry about. Um, they generally keep track of what they get. And I do banking analyses at the end of every season to determine whether or not someone should be renewed the next time around. Um, something to put in the back of your mind um, that will be happening in the next year or so is that the farmer's market nutrition programs will go to a mobile benefit. Checks Woo. will go away because nobody wants to deal with them anymore. Um, so we have to figure out how to do that. Um, there is a grant that we can request to help us with this effort. That grant requires that um, the application not use a card. So it has to be a mobile wallet sort of thing. Okay. Does it matter? I'm just wondering if like, if it, if like your actual disbursement changes at all, depending on like which markets are 
I guess we're not receiving them. So I guess my question was, does it matter like in what counties or in what markets you're receiving the, the vendors are receiving those checks that that doesn't matter? This, this year we um, eliminated the market application since that was work that market managers needed to do for little to no benefit. Um, mm -hmm. Each farmer is responsible for letting us know where they plan to sell. They can okay. only accept Wiccan Senior Benefits at selling locations that we know about. Okay. Okay. Um, well, and and the way, just, just in, in case anybody else is, is interested, the way we allocate benefits is based on um, WIC caseload by county, um, whether or not they distributed all of the benefits we allocated the previous year and their redemption. Okay. So it, it more, your, um, your disbursement more has to do with the actual number of cases in that area, as opposed to like where they're spending the money. Yes. Or the, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yes. We aggregate, um, aggregate redemption by county. And then if, uh, if the local agency goes to market to disperse benefits and they want to know um, they, they want that redemption data on a more granular level, then they create some sort of a tag for each distribution location. And then I can provide them with that analysis post-season. Thank you so much. And I am sorry, everybody, for, for talking a lot. If you know me, you know I talk way too much. Now, it looks like um, there's a couple of people who want to connect with you. So if you want to check this, the chat. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So we just have a few minutes left. So if anybody has anything they'd like um, to share with the group for the benefit of the group, because this, this could be a two-way discussion. Um, if not, please um, complete the survey form for me. That way I will not email that out to people. So thank you. And this is just the first in, the in a series of webinars where, we'll, where we will be looking at farmer's market metrics, how to go about doing it. Um, obviously, if you're using market management platforms, those come with a cost. So we'll explore some of those and then hopefully generate some ideas on how um, we can move forward as um, the state of Indiana, as we, as we learn more about taking getting more snap at farmers markets. And then as um, Legita and WIC and Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Programs work out how they will be implementing their programs moving forward. So um, sometimes I feel like it's a lot of moving um, pieces, but we are heading in the right direction. Um, yes, uh, yes, um, I can, I will. There's, like I said, there was a few, I know of three. so. Um, there was a question about farmer's market management systems. So I know of three. Um, the most popular ones um, is manage my market, uh, market spread or farm spread, which is all, it's the same company and market works. Um, but I suspect there are other systems out there. So as we move forward, um, I will be sharing them uh, predominantly through dig in. So keep your eyes um, on the newsletter and then we will be hosting some webinars on how to make life easier, hopefully. Any other questions? I wanted to comment on farm spread real quick. Although we are using it this year at Minatrista, um, I would set a, a large sizable chunk of time aside if it is something that you wanna look into. Nancy from Yorktown and I spoke like every single day for like a straight week, at least. I probably spent 60 hours setting up these applications and just becoming more familiar with the platform itself. I do think there are benefits to it, um, but it is a little bit more complicated than manage my market. And I, I don't know if it's like rightfully so yet, but um, the market starts May 7th, so we'll see. <laughs> awesome. So we'll, um, I'm gonna go ahead and thank everyone. If anybody has last minute questions, please feel free to unmute and ask them. If not, I want to thank our three speakers, Dominique, 
Jenny and Susan for sharing their time and talents with us. And um, we do have a May webinar um, coming up and I will be scheduling one for our time slot for the month of May and June. So keep a lookout on our website or in dig in. So thank you everyone. And I wish everyone a good afternoon. And again, thank you to our speakers.